What's going on, you guys? I want to show you a couple little tips and tricks to help make your ghost photos or any photo really feel a little bit darker, a little bit grittier, a little bit more spooky even. So let's get started. We're going to take this photo right here and turn it into something that looks like this right here. So let's do it. As always, we probably should have, and I didn't do it on this one, but I noticed it as soon as I looked at it, we probably should be cropping, cropping and straightening out lines a little bit. So I'm going to start by grabbing my crop tool, and let's get some of these lines a little bit straighter here. Just kind of clean this up just a touch right here. I don't want to lose any of this ghost right here, so I'm going to be careful of that. Make this feel a little bit more symmetrical. And this is already feeling a lot better. I like that a lot. There we go. Very nice, very nice. So let's get to it. I want to make the whole photo feel just a little bit darker. So I'm going to just bring the exposure down. I'm going to definitely bring the blacks down and the shadows down. And if there's some really bright spots, I might even bring the whites and the highlights down. I normally wouldn't do this, but again, we're going for that dark, spooky kind of feel here. Maybe even try, let's lower down the contrast. Play with the contrast, maybe. Maybe raise it up. I don't know. Let's see. I kind of like it lowered down, especially knowing that we're going to add some back in a little bit later. So I like that. I basically dragged everything to the left somewhat to make this photo a little bit darker. And we're already on our way. So let's come down here. We're now going to come down to our effects panel, and we're going to play around with the clarity, the dehaze, the texture, and of course, the vignette. I want a ton of clarity on this one, a ton of, so I'm going to crank that up to plus 100. And even that, here's a little spoiler alert, that's not enough, but you can see I can't add any more. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how later. I'm also going to add some texture to this. Be a little bit careful with this one. It can be easy to overdo it. Maybe right about there. And then definitely with dehaze, we don't want to do too much. That's way too much. So a little bit of dehaze goes a long way. Kind of about like that right there. So let's see, here's our before and our after. We've definitely made some progress, definitely making this feel a little bit spookier, a little bit more intense, and I'm liking it quite a bit better. Next thing I want to do is maybe add some blue to the whole photo. I'm going to use my color grading to do that. I'm going to use my shadows and highlights right here, and I'm just going to add a little bit of blue to both the shadows and the highlights. To do that, I'm going to click on this little circle right here. I'm going to drag that over to about there. And you can see the farther I go outside of the circle, the more intense that gets. So if I go all the way to there, that makes it look pretty intense. If I leave it right there, it's not too bad. And normally, I would not do the same color for both the shadows and highlights. But since we're going for kind of that feel here, I'm going to do that here. I basically just made the whole thing a little bit blue. There are other ways we could have done that, but I kind of like that effect. Now, let's go in and start making some local adjustments with these two dudes right here. Let's start with the radial gradient. This is one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and, um, let's see, check everything here. It looks good. I'm going to go ahead and just click and drag a circle right over my main ghost right there. I'm going to check a couple of things. One, I want my feather to be all the way up to 100%. And I want to make sure the invert is unchecked so that it, it's going to adjust what is inside of the circle. I'm going to brighten this ghost up a little bit, and I just want him to look like he's glowing just a little bit. He's got a little bit of a glowing effect there. There you go. And because I have two ghosts in this photo, I'm going to try doing the same thing on this ghost here in the background. And all I'm going to do there is just right-click on this and choose Duplicate. And then I'll move this over here. And I'll probably make this one a little bit smaller since that ghost is a little bit smaller as well. And very cool. I kind of like that. I want to come back to this ghost, though. I want him to look a little bit softer. And so I'm actually going to make sure this circle is selected by clicking on it. I'm actually going to lower down the clarity on that ghost. That's going to make him look a little bit fuzzy, a little bit blurry, maybe even lower down the dehaze just a little bit. And let's do the same thing with this guy. So I'll come and click on this circle. And I'm going to lower that clarity down and that dehaze down just a little bit as well. There we go. This is looking pretty solid here. We could make other local adjustments. If I felt like she was a little bit too dark, I might come and click and drag another circle on her and brighten her up just a little bit. But I do want to make her look a little more dead. So I might instead on her, instead of lowering the clarity and the dehaze down, I might crank it up even a little bit more on her just to kind of add that effect. So very good, very good, very good. Let's go back. Actually, I forgot one thing. Let's go back to our main edits here. And of course, we forgot everybody's favorite thing to add. A little vignette, and the vignette's going to help out quite a bit here. So let's expand effects back out, and let's definitely chuck a vignette on here. Perfect. Love it. Let's go to our linear gradient now. Remember earlier how I talked about how I couldn't take the clarity higher than 100? Well, what I'm going to do to solve that problem is before I ever create my gradient, I'm going to come here, I'm going to crank my clarity up to 100. And I'm going to come all the way here to the left-hand side, and I'm going to click and drag to the left. And that just added basically 100 more clarity 
to my photo here. A hundred more clarity just happened. And I could keep doing this. Maybe I want another hundred clarity. Not a problem. Watch this. I'll just click and drag another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. I don't want to do that though, so I'm going to delete some of these. A couple of them. I like the looks of that as well. My only thing is, now that I've done all this editing, I do want to go back and I want to come back and be like, okay, I may have overdone the vignette just a little bit. And by that, I mean a lot. So I'm definitely going to back the vignette off a little bit. And it's a little bit dark now. It's a little bit too dark. So I am going to bring up my exposure just a touch here. And then I feel like my glowing effect that I added to the ghost is also a little bit too bright. Not a problem. I'm going to come in here to my radial gradient. I'm going to click on this circle right here to select it. I'm going to just bring that exposure down just a touch. Just enough that it's not quite so obvious. Same thing with that one. Click on it first to select it. Come over here. Bring it down just a little bit. And there you go. That looks pretty dang good, you guys. Let's see. We started with this. And we ended up with this. I think this looks a lot better. How did I do as far as... The other one, this one was a little more gritty and I didn't add the blue on this one. That's why this one looks a little bit warmer. And of course I didn't crop it, which was a foolish mistake. But I like the looks of this a lot. I think this definitely looks very spooky and dark and ghost-like. So there you go. That's how I would edit this assignment if I were you.